Oh, what a tangled web we weave. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about a crazy story coming from ESPN involving a 47-year-old white lady by the name of Rachel Nichols, alluding to the fact that her 34-year-old black female co-worker, Maria Taylor, got to host the 2020 NBA Finals due to her race. Now, apparently there is audio and video of Rachel Nichols saying this. I don't have the video. I do have the audio. But before we get to that, I got to back up a little bit here to explain to you what's going on, just so you have proper context and so we're on the same page with each other. Now, Rachel Nichols, back in July 2020, was in the hotel room recording remotely for ESPN. Now, after that call got done, she got on a separate call with Clutch Sports. Now, Clutch is essentially LeBron James's sports agency. He doesn't own it, but his best friend of the past 20 years or so from Cleveland by the name of Rich Paul does. Now, Nichols was calling Clutch to try and get an interview with LeBron and also Anthony Davis. Now, you have to go through this white and or Jewish guy by the name of Adam Mendelson to get an interview with anybody on Clutch. This is LeBron's top advisor. And I mentioned this race and other races because it matters to the story. I'll get to that in a minute. Y'all just hang tight. Now, while on the phone with Adam, she's talking about the interviews, of course. And then that kind of devolves into her talking about her frustrations, you know, venting about ESPN, how they talk about they want to be inclusive, but have an abysmal record of doing so. Then she's upset about basically being booted from hosting the NBA Finals in favor of Maria Taylor and her race is probably the reason why. Now, how did this audio get out? What happened? Did LeBron record it? Who did it? I'll explain. Remember, she was on the call earlier with ESPN. She thought the camera was off, but it was not off. So it was still recording audio and video and it was being hosted at a server over at ESPN. So everything she said on the phone with Clutch, talking about the interview, talking about race or whatever, that was recorded audio and video. So some employees had access to this data that was on the server, and they leaked it first internally. People are passing it around. People are furious. Um, And one person, a black female employee of ESPN, leaked it to Maria Taylor specifically and also to Deadspin. So that person got suspended and brought back and whatnot. But now everybody knows Maria Taylor and the crew of NBA Countdown, which is Jay Williams and Jalen Rose. They're upset. They threatened to boycott. It was a whole big mess. But before I go any further, let's go ahead and roll the clip. In this clip, you're going to hear, not see, well, there's subtitles on the screen, but you're going to hear what Rachel Nichols said about Maria Taylor and ESPN. After we get done with that, I'll come back. I'll talk about what was said there. Then I'll give you the rest of my two cents, my deep detail analysis, and then I'll wrap it on up with a nice bow on top. So without further ado, let's go ahead and roll it. They said to me, hey, instead of posting the NBA Finals, what do you think there was a sound recorded after the NBA Finals? Because guess what that was going to be Maria to do the hosting Yeah. So, I have declined. I don't know what their next move is, but they are feeling pressure because of all of that. And um, I'm trying to figure out, like, how to just, you know, my thing is, like, I, you know, I wish Maria Taylor all the success in the world. She covers football, she covers basketball. If you need to give her more things to do because you're feeling pressure about your like, crappy long-time record anniversary, which, by the way, I myself, like, know personally from the female side of it, like, go for it. Just, you know, find it somewhere else. Like, you're not going to find it with me. All right, so you saw that, you heard that. Now, straight away, there is much more here than meets the eye. There's much more. And it's not just about Rachel Nichols versus Maria Taylor and the cat fight, girl fight, or whatever. There's a whole lot here. You got nepotism going on. You got big money going on. Politics, contracts, everything. But I'm going to start with the first thing. 
why would Rachel Nichols go immediately to the race thing? Why would you go there? Now, granted, I got to be fair. She didn't say that Maria Taylor got the job because she's black specifically, but read between the lines. She's talking about, oh, well, I know what that's like coming from the woman's side, speaking about diversity. Well, you, you guys both women, so cancel that out. It's about her being black. You think she got the job over you because she's black. Maybe, just maybe, Maria Taylor is a better host. Now, quite frankly, I don't watch ESPN, so I wouldn't know if she is or isn't, but just maybe that's the case. Also, maybe the obvious thing is the looks factor. I'm not trying to be shallow. I'm not trying to be judgmental, but it is what it is. There's a phrase, you have a face for radio for a reason, right? If you're on television and you got ESPN, the audience, 99.99% male, between the ages of like 18 and 55, if you're going to have a woman hosting the NBA Finals, she's got to be nice looking. That's just the reality of the situation. You're not going to go in there with a bonnet on, without a dress and your makeup and your hair. You're going to look nice on camera, and you guys can be the judge. Uh, who's it going to be, WCW? I'm playing. Rachel Nichols or Maria Taylor? I'll leave that and keep on moving. There's a contract negotiation happening right now uh, with uh, Maria Taylor. Maria Taylor is currently getting $1 million a year, and she wants to get upwards of $8 million a year, allegedly. ESPN offered her like $5 million a year. Well, she'll be able to rise to $5 million eventually, but for right now, it's between $2 and $3 million a year. And her contract is up like right now. Like in the, in the next few days during this year's NBA Finals, her contract will be up. And they've not really been able to come to an agreement. So Jason Whitlock, formerly of ESPN, said this could be a contract dispute. You putting this year old audio out right now because maybe Maria Taylor wants leverage to try and get a better contract. Maybe that's it. Just maybe. Um, but to get back to Rachel Nichols right quick, I find it funny how she's trying to allude to, you know, uh, her race. And that's the reason why she's put where she's at, not because of hard work. And she's making it seem like she got to where she is because of hard work and she's dedicated to the craft and just a great person. Like, she's on a ESPN show with former NBA players and her. She was never any, any kind of athlete or anything like that throughout her whole life. She is a journalist. She started off writing. She went to a school for journalism. That's what she does. She's a journalist. She gets interviews. So why is she on shows with NBA players and stuff like that? Why? Why her out of all people in the world? Why would she get to host the NBA Finals? Why? Well... Here's maybe an explanation, and shout out to Kwame Brown for this little nugget of news. Rachel Nichols is married to a guy by the name of Max Nichols. Max Nichols is the son of Mike Nichols. He died a few years ago, rest in peace. Mike Nichols was married to, wait for it, Diane Sawyer. We all know who that is. Very well-known journalist, interviewer, has gotten some of the best scoops out of everybody in the world, Diane Sawyer. So maybe, just maybe, due to Diane Sawyer being Rachel Nichols' mother-in-law, maybe that's how she got to be where she is. Also, Mike Nichols, when he was living, he was really big in Hollywood. So she has the L.A. scene on lock, journalism on lock. She's a social climber. Maybe that's why she is where she is. So you want to accuse Maria Taylor of getting to where she's at because of her race, all this, that, and the third, and this whole diversity thing from ESPN. Well, how about you? Why are you there? Why am I watching ESPN and seeing this random lady that does not really know about basketball at all? Why, why am I seeing her? It's because of some politics, in my humble opinion. But hey, you guys can let me know more about that in the comments if you have a, a better reason why she's there. But to get back to it, there was you know a threat of a boycott from some of the guys at ESPN Maria Taylor and Jay Williams, Jalen Rose, they wanted to boycott the NBA countdown show. I think Maria Taylor wound up not boycotting with the condition that Rachel Nichols did not appear on air with her. So what did ESPN do? ESPN, they would pre-record Rachel Nichols and still put her on the show with Maria Taylor, just not during live segments when she would have to interact with her. This, this is how this, this corporate, dirty, weird stuff goes. But I was always told that ESPN is woke and down for the people. This is what happens when being woke goes wrong. We have all these little 
groups in ESPN. You got the black group, the LGBT group, the Asian group, the Hispanic group, the X Y. You got all these little subgroups in ESPN. They're so woke. The virtue signal in talking about Black Lives Matter, LGBTQ, LMNOP. When you got all that stuff going on inside the corporate structure of ESPN, it begins to bleed out into your final product. If there's a game that comes on that I want to see, and I see that it says ESPN, I'm like, oh, I don't want to. I'll pass on that one. If it's on TNT, and I get to watch, uh, you know, Chuck and Kenny and Shaq talk about what's going on afterward and or during the game and halftime. Fantastic. Great. ESPN is terrible. It's too woke. It's too corporate. And it's getting to the point where it's even affecting Fox News. Well, not Fox News, but Fox Sports and, and TNT. You know, uh, Shannon Sharp getting woke. Skip Bayless getting woke. Charles Barkley is like, look, I'm going to go ahead and bounce up out of here because I can't even say anything anymore. I can't talk about the, the fat ladies in San Antonio no more without somebody getting offended. All this woke stuff and people talking about how virtuous they are will just crash and burn in the end, which is why you're seeing this right now on ESPN. The network so woke and so brave and so stunning. You got this person being accused of racism, getting caught in some compromising audio. And the funny part is that she didn't even get, um, she didn't even get any kind of discipline, but the person who leaked the audio did get disciplined. That's hilarious. But Hey, at the end of the day, as I close, I'll say this, you reap what you sow. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you, how do you feel about this ESPN kerfuffle, Rachel Nichols, Maria Taylor, all the woke stuff, you know, it, it, you know, you want to be woke and down for the people when it benefits you. Right. But not when it doesn't Rachel Nichols will have guys on like Floyd Mayweather Derrick Rose bring up their past talking about, you know, allegations that didn't get found guilty of, you know, because you got to stand for women, black lives matter, all this and that. But then when it affects you, all of a sudden you don't want to do it no more. All of a sudden, nope, she got there because she's black. You know, I, I think that the, the woke stuff is, is not much different than what she said, because if you believe that people are oppressed because of black, if you believe in white supremacy, then you got to believe that whites are supreme. You got to believe that blacks can't do anything and they're oppressed. And the only reason why they're able to succeed is because of the white man putting them somewhere. The, the woke stuff feeds into racist stuff. And at a certain point, it becomes indistinguishable. Once you take away all the superlatives and flowery language and get down to the core of what's being said, it is the same thing. Woke racism, no difference. We're seeing a prime time example happen before our very eyes, right on MS ESPN. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.